Hello, class. This is Financial Literacy Explanation 1. Uh, I'm going to try to post one screencast video a week uh, and, you know, looking at a lesson or different aspects of lessons that are important. Uh, we're going to start off with Lesson 1.1 just to kind of show you uh, how to work through the APEX program if you haven't used it and just different features of it, uh, preparing you, you know, to take the quizzes and things in each section. Um, so as you get into the program, you see Unit 1. We're going to go to Lesson 1.1. You can click on the overview if you want, um, but you can also go to the study. So that's what we're going to look at, looking at the study and preparing you to take the quiz. And should you know, to try to pace yourself, um, if you can do a study and a quiz, or sometimes there's more than one study for a quiz each day, uh, but getting done at least one thing per day, moving on toward finishing up uh, for, the, for the year. And I know we're only at the beginning of the year, but it's never too early to think uh, for the future. All right, so study. If we click on that, it says resume for me because I already looked at this, but it'll say start when you do it. Um, so each screen starts with different things. Um, you know, sometimes they give you a quote here. There's a place for you to click if you want to get a study guide. You can do that. Um, that's up to you. If you want to look at the study guide, which helps you through the lesson, it's taking a little bit to load here. Um, but if you click on that, uh, the study guide uh, will come up. All right, so as you go through, it asks you questions and prompts you. Uh, and then, you know, there's different things like here is a video. Um, it's asking you up here, take a look at the questions below. Would you struggle to answer any of them? So when you look at the questions, see if you struggle to answer them. If you click them, it shows you the question. You can see it's a 41 second video, which goes through different questions and, and asks you that. So, you know, you can look through that, um, and see what you think about each question that it's prompting you for. On screen two, uh, it, it, there's different information here. If you click this. A good place to start securing your future is to develop your financial literacy skills. The set of skills and knowledge needed to make informed decisions about money matters. So it reads to you what's above here. But also notice this is in blue, and that's a reason that it's, it's different than the black font here, because if you click that, it gives you a drop down with definitions. Financial literacy. And then even reads those to this you reads the definition to you. So that's what you would do on that page. And then here, um, match the dollar value. So putting what you think it would be. If you bought a new Ford Mustang, would that be $2.86? Probably not. Um, you'd want to click on these. Um, and it looks like um, as you click these, select each item in the left column and it's matched. Oh, OK, so if we click, maybe it'll tell us we're right. OK. New Ford Mustang. There we go. So it clicks. I gave you the first one. So as you click and you click the other one that you think it would be. All right. The next screen, again, you have a financial literacy definition here if you need to review that. Uh, nice little graphic here, like an old bingo spinner. I was hoping when you clicked it, it moved, but it doesn't. Um, but if you read this, it gives you the information that you need for this page. Uh, and then it also gives you some questions. You can see there's only one question here. So after you read this page, you should be able to answer this question. Financial literacy deals with how money is blank over time. The money is saved over time, spent over time, or managed over time. And then after you put your answer, let's say I think it's spent. If I hit submit, it'll tell me whether or not that's correct. And if you, you, know, you put spent, you go, ah, I don't think it's that. You can drag it down and then put one of those different answers up there. Okay, uh, today's financial literacy concerns, uh, again, uh, it gives you some information on the page. Um, again, if you need it read to you, you can click there. It'll, it'll <laughs> pardon me, read the page to you. Uh, and then in 20 words or fewer, list some outcomes of financial crisis mentioned above. So mention some things about financial crisis. You want to type in those words and then submit your answer. The importance of knowing what you sign. So this is kind of about um, signing things. Hey, I want to buy a house. I want to buy a car. Uh, those different things. What are you getting into when you sign on those papers? Okay. And then there's, again, a definition here. Uh, unfortunately, some of these people were also victims of predatory lending. So it'll tell you what predatory lending is. Predatory lending. The act of lending money in an intentionally dishonest manner for one's own gain often without the expectation that the money can be paid back. Okay, so again, it would give you that info there. 
Okay, so this gives you, uh, if you click on this, it'll give you the situation and how would you respond if you got this phone call. Okay, when you begin, it shows you little speech bubbles of what would happen and then how the girl on the, the right responds and then you would drag what you think the right answer should be and it'll take you through that whole scenario. Uh, protecting what is yours, you know, it's going to go into what are scams, what is fraud, what is phishing, um, etc. Uh, and it, it tells you some different things to look out for phishing, scams, etc. Again, if you need to hear this read, you click that and it reads the page to you. All right, so it goes into here, what are phishing scams? What is identity theft? Um, and then down here, strategies for avoiding uh, those scams. You know, you, you put the answer up into the spot that you think that it belongs. Okay, sound decision-making. Financial literacy involves sound decision-making. You've probably heard this phrase before. Can you pick out the sound decisions in the activity below? So sound decision would be a good decision, basically. Here it tells you a decision that is a result of weighing your options and making sure it makes the most sense given your goals and current situations. So sound decisions are good decisions. Not a sound decision would be a bad decision. So you'd want to decide each of these situations, where do they fit? Is it a good decision or a sound decision or not a good decision? And here you go. Uh, what, whose advice should you trust? It's talking about family, friends, classmates, or your accountant. Um, gives you a situation here and you want to look through this page. Making decisions at what cost? Okay, again, more information here and something for you to do down here. Select each item in the left column and match it in the right column. Buying an item at a cheap clearance price. Lack, what's the opportunity cost? Is that going to be lack of energy later? Potential for homework to pile up? Less potential for higher pay? Inability to return the item later for a refund? No vacation time for the rest of the year? Less time to spend with your family? Less real world work? Work, workplace. Okay, so I'm thinking if you buy an, an item at a cheap clearance price, um, inability to return it. So that's correct. But you would want to decide on these other ones and then connecting them um, to which what's the opportunity cost on the on the right. Okay, so again, opportunity cost and sound decisions gives you some definitions there that you need. Um, and in 20 words or fewer, name some other types of opportunity costs besides money, time, and energy. So opportunity cost, what does it cost to take that opportunity? It doesn't necessarily mean money. It could be uh, uh, you know, uh, cost of your time, cost of your safety, cost you know, of your security, et cetera, um, those different type of costs. All right, and then it asks you to check for understanding. It asks some questions here. And then there you go. It says you completed the lesson um, and it lets you uh, get ready for the quiz. Um, so again, I'll be on Zoom during those times I posted on Google Classroom. But just for your reminder, it's from 8.51 to 9.26, which is your period two. Also 11.23 to 11.58, which is your period six. So feel free to check on me with those times. I'm also on Zoom after school from 12.40 to 3 most days, unless I have a meeting. Uh, and you can always ask me questions through Google Classroom as well. So I hope this was helpful.